Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. I'm Brooke. I'm Diana. And this is episode 54. Today, we will be discussing Fear the Walking Dead, season five, episode six, entitled The Little Prince, with the theme of conservation. We will also discuss a anime film on Netflix called The Silent Voice. Ooh. <laughs> Before we dive in, how are you doing, Diana? I am good, Brooke. How are you? Doing great. Thank you so much. I'm just very happy to be here. It's been a wonderful beginning of my week. How is yours? Good. It is great. I feel, I was feeling a little tired, but I'm getting my energy back. This always helps instill my energy. So I'm just really excited to be here talking with you. Yay. Yay. That's awesome. I'm very excited to be here. And I got my little hedgehog. I love that My little ceramic hedgehog. I got it. We got it back from the, so um, you know, the place that we paint. I think it's called. There, what, there's one in Willow Glen called Petroglyph. I don't know. Yeah, no, I've been there before. Okay. No, this one's called okay. Something Time. It's in Sunnyvale. I'm so sorry. I cannot think of the name of it. But um, it's, I just love my little hedgehog. He's so cute. So, so adorable. Yeah. Hopefully All the we, little freckles on there. I know. His cute little <laughs> nose. I just keep looking back. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun to hang out with my coworkers and work on it. It. Um, we've done it once before. Um, this time was so much better. And uh, we just had a good time. It's a good thing for groups to do. Okay. So. I, I, I love doing group activities. Um, I work independently, so it's usually like me and one other client right. or maybe another client, you know, so it's it's a very small, intimate atmosphere, but um, I really enjoy the group environment. Um, I guess that's why I have such a big family, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, just being that uh, I'm, we're always somehow, some way or another surrounded by friends or family, I'm curious and I'm just wondering, you know, if you had something valuable, whether it be an item or just information, mm-hmm. would you keep something from that friend, family that's rightfully theirs and doesn't necessarily belong to you in order to protect them or their feelings? Wow. That's a very That's a intense, loaded, yes, yeah. question. Right? Because it's a big deal. I mean, it could be, you know, like a, a letter or, or what if it was like... Um, you know, since we're so modern day, like, what if you saw video footage of, uh, of your best friend's husband? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, and he's supposed to be on a diet and he's going to <laughs> the diet. ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> I love it. So I have, wait, where's the footage? So it belongs to her yeah. or whatever. And uh, I've seen it. And do I erase it so she doesn't see it? (laughs) Yeah. Because why? Why is it going to hurt her feelings? I don't understand. Well, what if she's dieting too and she's like, you know, and and he keeps magically losing weight and she's trying so hard, but then he's eating ice cream and burgers and fries and he's losing weight and not her. And that's not fair. (laughs) I don't know. I love this book. (laughs) You're so funny. (laughs) Okay, back to the question. <laughs> um, so I would really want to protect that person and their feelings. But at the same time, I feel like I would have to, you know, it really depends. It depends so much. But if something belonged to them, I don't think I could keep an item away from them. Mm-hmm. I think I could keep, like if I just heard something someone said something about somebody sure we're not going to tell them to hurt their feelings but if i was actually keeping something from them physically Mm -hmm. i don't think i could do it i really don't i feel like because of karma Mm -hmm. i would have to i would try my best to soften the blow and and to put it in another spin it in another light so that they wouldn't get hurt yeah I've been in that position where I actually know something about, you know, um, uh, let's just call it a rumor. Mm-hmm. Right. Now it'd be up to me and it it still kind of gets me to this day. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, man. But I, I, I just don't feel like it's my place to disclose that yeah. information yeah. because I didn't hear it directly from right. the people necessarily... 
that it would be affected. So I feel a little bit shady not saying anything or not doing anything about it, but at the same time, you know, um, I'm trying to keep the peace as right. well. Yeah. And I don't want anybody's feelings to be hurt because, right. like, they appear so happy. Oh, right? Like, you're yeah. happy. Yeah. Uh huh. And I don't want to rock anybody's boat, you know? I, mm-hmm. Right. Some things, I guess, in that regard, maybe some things were not meant to be disclosed. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But you said karma. But that was <laughs> like, you know, so like a few years ago. Um, where I get got that information, and now I'm a different person. So if I were to hold on to that for a certain amount of time, like, do you, at some point... <laughs> You're asking me? I'm the karma god. I'm going to tell you if it's going to come back. Uh, this is my therapy Listen. session. <laughs> I, I think it, because of, I think if your conscience is telling you what to do, you're fine, right? But I think if you're, like, doubting yourself... I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't want to put anything on you. I'm just telling you for me. I, I can feel for... Okay, so we're reviewing Fear the Walking Dead, but I'm thinking of Big Little Lies with the whole Bonnie thing. It's like killing her because yeah. she can't tell the truth and she wants to so I can't so wait to talk bad. about Big Little Lies, by the so, way. We'll talk about that a little more a little later on. But um, anyway, so back to our question. So are, do you want to talk about this further or shall I ask no. our listeners? Let's ask. <laughs> What other people are so like, listeners. This is a hard one, right? It's would you keep something from a friend that is rightfully theirs to protect their feelings? So let us know what you think. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter. You can also subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. So Brooke, what were your overall thoughts on this episode? Oh my gosh! Well, I thought that this episode, speaking of teamwork, I, you know, I felt like it had a lot of that and headed in the right direction to building or rebuilding the lost world. The last time I saw an actual community um, in Fear of the Walking Dead or in Walking Dead universe was um, when, you know, before we lost Madison. Yeah. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that was the last time that I had seen that. So Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I think so. All right. And seeing them all working on the plane kind of reminded me of Alexandria or Hilltop in The Walking Dead, for that matter. Just because mm-hmm. I personally haven't seen them, like, tinkering around the way that they were um, on that airplane. Right. So I thought it was really exciting, except for when we had Madison. Yeah. And they're in that, in that arena park. There you go. Yeah, and they're like building been, stuff, yes. and they had livestock and all of that. So, yeah, I, I thought it was really um, good for me to see them rebuild. It seemed like they were going to be able to rebuild. Right. So, how about you? What did you think? There were some really nice moments in this episode. I love the ones with June. And between John and Dwight. And, you know, I do have to say some moments felt soapboxy and over the top. But Uh I am still excited to see who and how they make it out of this radiation territory. Ooh, they need to get out of there. They have a time limit now. I know. So, yeah, it's it's getting pretty... um, scarce, I think. And with Alicia and Annie, speaking of scarce, I just feel like, you know, they're trying so hard to keep those kids um, and their trust. They really need their trust because they feel like they want to take care of them now. Mm -hmm. And so with Alicia and Annie, you know, we see Alicia trying to help and mentor Annie, which I thought that was really incredible. Um, And Annie cleaned up in a nice hot shower. Yeah. And I hardly recognized her at first. Yeah. Um, but then the other kids, we see them watching cartoons and eating snacks. And Max and Dylan, they were, like, going through the protein bars. And then when they saw Annie, they almost didn't recognize her as well. So that was really... Yeah. Um, it's nice to be a kid for a little bit for them, I'm sure. Gosh, and what a weight off of their shoulders. Yeah. You know? Um, so... You know, this must have been scary for them to have that normalization also, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Um, It wasn't part of their current routine, and it's probably a little bit of a bittersweet moment. Right. I agree. It probably was. Yeah. So I thought that was really good for them to be exposed to that. Mm -hmm. And we also saw Alicia 
um, surprise Morgan in the janitor's <laughs> closet. And he was like fumbling around, like almost desperately with that mop, uh, which we later see him kill a walker with the same mop stick um, when Alicia was about to kill that walker with a propeller. Right. So he's like, you know, he's got his ammo back, um, but he's also continuing to protect Alicia and keep her safe from feeling that that's all she has to do. Like, he's right. got a lot on his mind. Yeah. That's so. true. Mm hmm Yeah. So, you know, Annie, when she was talking to Alicia, Alicia, she tells her what happened to her parents and the other adults and why she has to take care of her brothers and the other kids. Yeah. And Annie and her siblings end up leaving before they know the danger of the other reactor. I know. Because Alicia left the keys for her saying, you know, if you really have to go, here they are. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she thought they would really leave. No. She, yeah, she definitely felt like she could get through to her. And, you know, the door's always open. Yeah. Kind of mentality. But now it seems like they might have to go looking for them. Well, they are now. Yeah. I think I don't think Alicia knew the extent. Or they may have not known at that point. Um about the reactor, so... No, because Morgan just got back after she tried to kill him yeah. with the propeller, and then she went for the kids after the propeller thing, and then yeah. so, they were gone. So that was definitely... Otherwise, yeah. yeah, she wouldn't have given her the keys, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And so, Grace and Morgan... So Grace radios Morgan asking for the generator. If she doesn't get it, there will be another meltdown, and she can only temporarily preserve their environment. With giving Grace the generator, the others have to power down everything that they have and they use up until now. Mm -hmm. So I must say that even though I like the idea of conserving, I hate when our pg e goes out. I only want it to go out when I'm asleep. I know, right? Because it's so yeah. convenient for them. We're like the kids are watching yeah. TV. They mm -hmm. have hot water. Yeah. <sighs> Using the radio. Yeah. So, so even those little things that they have, they have to, you know. Yeah. And then they can't communicate with Strand anymore. The, the, mm -hmm. Luciana was like, Strand, we're going dark. Right. If you're out there, you know, we don't know what's going on. Because I don't think they knew that Strand would be on yeah. the way. Yeah, I know. Can you imagine, though, without, I mean, like I said, PG&E, can you imagine? I just hate it. Even when PG&E goes out for an hour or two, I'm like, there's no PG&E. We can't turn on the lights. We can't wash the clothes and dry them. Mm -hmm. And hmm. I would be a little lost in this world. I would not like it. Especially like us TV club people. I know. How could we watch TV? Oh we need gosh. a little hand generator to... Yeah get something going so we could power the television, some yeah. TV somehow. I don't I know. know. I wonder what kind of generator that they had anyways, because it must have run on gas. Interesting that they had that resource, but anywho's. Well, and then Morgan helps Grace move the cars, uh, and he's about to go with her into the zone, but she locks him out of the vehicle and tells him that he's a kind and thoughtful man, but she is doing this on her own. Mm. He, he thought he was helping. Yeah. Well, and he was willing to help. Yeah. I she doesn't know. want him to die. She feels this is her responsibility, so she wants to do this on her own. Hmm. And she doesn't want it at the expense of anyone else's lives. Well, sorry, Grace. They're going to be right behind you. They have no choice. I know. Now they got to go find everybody. Uh -huh. Yeah. And John and Dwight. Oh. Dwight is so motivated and positive yeah. that he and John are headed in the right track, which oh. is so... Oh, I've never seen Dwight so, um, you know, in his good feelings yeah. like that. I, I've never seen that. Nope. Oh, it was so refreshing to see. And I honestly thought I was, like, rooting for him, too. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh, are we going to see Sherry? Yes. In episode? Yeah. I really thought that we would. Um, and... Just having those extra set of eyes that John has, and he has some really resourceful uh, detective skills. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Yes, he does. So amazing! Yeah. I can't believe it. Um, he cracked a code that she, <laughs> yeah. that he, you know, or Sherry had left on a letter, and he was able to pencil that over and find out what exactly that she wrote. And how did that make you feel when he didn't share that letter with Dwight? I mean, what do you think John will do now? 
Well, first off, I want to say I love these scenes between John and Dwight. John asks Dwight how he and Sherry split up, and Dwight says it's complicated. Mm -hmm. So John shares how June first said she loved him, and then Dwight replies, well, it worked out for you, John. It's the way you see things. Mm -hmm. It must be how you were before. Mm -hmm. And... You know, he says how the world hasn't burned, broken, or twisted him. Mm -hmm. And John says he's luckier now than he was before, Mm -hmm. which I found so interesting. Yeah. So he prefers his life now, which I am like, it shocked me in a way. Even though when I think of uh, The Walking Dead, um, I think Daryl in the beginning mentioned that too, because back when he was... Merle's little brother, you know, he didn't live a very good life. Mm -hmm. And so I think, minus the, you know, the walker right behind you, Daryl prefers his life is now, his role that he carries now. And it makes me wonder about Carol, too, because here she was Mm -hmm. a beaten wife. Mm -hmm. And now she has a completely different role. So She's a woman on top. So Mm -hmm. now I guess I can see how John might prefer his life now. Dwight? I mean, no, John. John. Okay. Yeah, because John was saying he's luckier now than he was in his life before. He has more now than he had before. That's amazing. It was surprising. Yeah. And so about the letter, I can say I was, at the moment it was happening, I was really shocked. I I didn't think, I'm like, no, no, no. Oh my God, you have to tell him. Mm -hmm. But. Oh, the look on John's face when he found it. Oh. Yeah, I. He doesn't want Dwight to lose hope. And I really want Dwight to find Sherry, just like you do. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going to be able to do that now. I mean, her letter was like, stop looking for me. Yeah. This is my last letter. Does she letter. really mean that, though? She could be like June, who just says, oh, don't do it, and is running kind of away from it. But maybe maybe she feels, because she killed a, a guy, because he was about to kill her, maybe she feels guilt about that or something. I don't know. We don't know her feelings, because we, don't we haven't seen her. Really her. Yeah. I think that's something that would definitely keep a person going. You know, something that you know, that you've known since before this happened. You would think that you would want a piece of that back. Like Maggie and Glenn. You yeah. know, they didn't know each other before, but yeah. when they were separated from the prison. Yeah. You know, they were determined to find each other. Right. Even if they found each other walking dead, they just needed to know. Right. Well, I think she's being, hopefully, I mean, I'm assuming she's being selfless at this point. So that's why I'm saying if he does still look for her, well, then why wouldn't she want to see him? She'd be happy to see him. Oh, she'd be happy to see him. Yeah. Yeah. So She just didn't want him to come in harm's way. Right. So maybe she won't leave him any more notes. But Then that stay just, where you are. Stay where you are. Well, maybe are. she has to keep going. Maybe she doesn't know he's finding these. That's the thing, right? Ah, oh, it's so hard. Mm-hmm. When you don't have a cell phone, it's really hard to find people or tracking devices. Or a crow. Yes, exactly. Or Castle Black. <laughs> Something. <laughs> So Al is trying to fix the plane with what tools and equipment they have, and the motor starts. And everyone is excited, but then it starts to putter out, and the propeller begins to fall apart and fly all over the place, and everyone has to duck and cover, and now they need a new propeller. Oh, I was so bummed. I was like, wow, Al is so skilled. I know! <laughs> She has a lot of skills on me. She's pulling all this stuff out of her pocket. I know. She can climb rocks. She can, I mean, she does all kinds of, she flies airplanes. Now she's fixing them. She's amazing. She's a journalist. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. And so then later, when Al continues to work on the plane, June comes to her and mm-hmm. talks with her. And Al mentions the helicopter and how she wishes she could have stopped it. Mm-hmm. But June laughs, but realizes there's something more. So... June asks if something happened when she was gone, and Al doesn't answer. And um, she says, hey, June says, hey, you let me talk off the record, and it really helped. If you ever need to do the same, you can. Least I can do. And then Al looks the other way. Mm. So I I was curious last week about Al not telling Morgan Mm-hmm. And Alicia. So I wonder if she will. Uh, you know, eventually. I think 
And I, what I love about June is she's so good at reading people, reading people, and making it easy to confide in her. Yeah. Or, or feel like she's a safe place to do that. Mm-hmm. She did that earlier with Annie, telling her about uh, um, her ankle and like if oh she wants to run away, just you know maybe wait a week to let it heal. Mm-hmm. And now she's doing it with Al. Right. Um, so now that they need another plane, um, Sarah, she was working on the other plane. Yes. Back at Beyond the Mountains. Yes. Now I know. Now I understand where everybody is because I didn't understand. I didn't either. The freaking plane situation. Yeah. Why are they flying around? Why can't yeah. they just walk or drive yes. or whatever? Uh-huh. And so I guess now we know that they're across the mountains. Mm-hmm. I guess they're in Santa Cruz. <laughs> We're in the valley. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Sarah, she's like, she's she's a great mechanic as well. Uh-huh. I missed Wendell. I, I did not see Wendell in this episode, mm-hmm. so I was bummed that he yeah. wasn't around. Mm-hmm. What was he doing? I guess, I don't know. But Sarah was, like, tinkering around with the propeller and then, like, the... Uh, I know, the zombie the blood, blood and guts squirts, are she was like, on her face. That's oil. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, God. I'm like, where's your, like, handkerchief? Yeah. Get that for her. But, yeah, that's pretty um, amazing. And I'm like, at, at first I was really confused. Like, where are these pla- Like, I've forgotten. I didn't understand that um, Al and everybody on that side of the hill had the plane that they crashed. Right. And then... Strand and Sarah and Charlie Wendell, uh-huh, they uh-huh. had the other plane that they chewed up all those walkers with. Right. From Daniel. Yes. So then I put everything together. I'm like, <laughs> okay, yeah. now I understand. So they're going to get the propeller. Yeah. Hopefully it fits. Hopefully oh the propellers gosh. work. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will. Because <sighs> everything fits together perfectly when it's supposed to. Right. So. And it's a big plane that... Um, Morgan and Alicia and everybody else that they have. It's a big old cargo plane. I was plane. shocked. I was like, what the heck? Yeah. And all the trucks, when they came into the truck stop, like yeah. how they had all the pieces, vehicles, and yeah. they're, you know, everybody's like right. happy, like, yay. Yeah. You know, they're mm-hmm. here. I thought yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, that was that was great that they brainstorm on how to help their friends, Sarah, Sarah Charlie, and Strand, about mm-hmm. bringing that to them Mm -hmm. so but oopsie they find themselves in a predicament when they arrive right so um charlie had asked sarah if i can't remember the beer guy's name but the guy that made all brewed all the beer he died jimbo or jimbo there you go thank you (laughs) she is so good (laughs) charlie had asked if he left everything behind yeah and then there's a magazine or an advertisement Uh uh-huh and I tell you, I rewound that scene. Me like, too. Multiple. I'm all, what are they looking at? All I know. Thing? Yeah. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't know. Forget it. Just push play. Yeah. yeah. And um, ended up being a blimp. Yeah. Or a hot air balloon. Yeah. Not a blimp. Well. <laughs> more, more or less, right? <laughs> what, yeah. What the blimp? <laughs> so it was a hot air balloon, and then Strand and Charlie. Are headed over from Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz? To the Silicon Valley. In the to blimp. save us from these radiated yeah, walkers. In the blimp. And it was a shape like a beer bottle. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, gosh. Now I want to see what How other hot air balloons. How did they fill that? See, this is my thing about well, these far-fetched things. But I don't know. Propane or whatever, flame, gas, whatever they use, right? Yeah, I know. It's oxygen. It's filled with hot yeah, air. But they had to get it, and they had to make sure the things worked. And but, How do you control but, that? I, I know. Well, know. that's what I was going to say. How does Strand oh, know God, what the heck I'm he's so doing? Scared. I don't even know and how then to do he's like, pulling, hang gliding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, oh, they're going down, they're going down. And Charlie's all <laughs> looking at him like, what the heck? Yeah. Drive this straight. And exactly. he's all, I can't, I can't. And then they're going, going down. down. Yeah, they're going down. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, perfect. Going right into the area where all the reactor. Oh, my gosh. I know. I was like, maybe out. Augusta is winds are like, whoosh, blow them. But I no. know. They go straight down. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Not good. No. Not good at all. No. So now we know. And then they see, as they stand up, they see walkers with those 
tags on them. Yeah, that, decimeters. Yeah, that's right. Ooh, see, you're good. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, they uh, uh, they're going for them, but they show a big long shot, and I'm thinking, run around the the balloon, run right. around the balloon, get out the back. And I think Morgan said on the walkie not to kill them. Yes, because Charlie says we're not supposed to kill them. We can't get the blood on us. So I'm glad at least they have that information. Mm-hmm. So that's why they're all panicked too, because they don't want to kill them. They want to just get away from them. So what are they gonna do? told you run around the balloon but i don't know what we don't know that's what it looked like at that moment who knows what's going to happen no by next week well they should be able to you think but then if they run around there's trees all around and so then they're potentially in danger because then there'll be walkers in the trees so hopefully maybe grace will be nearby that's true and maybe she'll be able to come and help Uh out with that i hope so I don't know. I'd be hesitant to run for the trees because you, then you're like, you know, there's a lot of trees. Maybe they'll find a tree tent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what other things did you notice, Brooke? Oh, so it's just crazy that the mountains were what is keeping them separated. I still yeah. think that is like, oh, I'm just like an awakening. I'm like, oh, I finally get it. Yeah. Um, and with the plane and like having all those kids maintaining it as well, like, oh, I can't even get my children to clean the backyard. <laughs> like, how are they working on <laughs> a dang plane? <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was really cool um, that these, that they're able to. Well, they want to get them out of get there. The children. Yeah. In a. The kids like, want to get yeah, the group they're out of there. Helping them out and they're being positive and they're being trained. And mm-hmm. it might be something for them not being around adults all this time mm-hmm. it's something good for them so i was really glad to see that and the blimp was just or i keep calling it a blimp but it's a hot air balloon yeah <laughs> that was such a surprise and i really thought that was so cool um in the walking dead universe to see a hot air balloon like i never never would have thought about that ever yeah so it's very cool who these writers are putting this in this yeah. script and directing it. And Strand, you know, he can drive a yacht. Now he can drive <laughs> a hot air balloon. Right. You know, so I think that's really um, amazing. But, you know, bummer that they landed in that contaminated zone. And it's going to be intense. It is. The next episode. Mm-hmm. So I paid attention to the opening credits. Awesome. And we see mountains. Yeah. I thought, great, this is the only clue you're giving me. Because <laughs> I really paid attention. Because I'm like, Brooks cool. always pays attention to yeah. the beginning. So I'm going to do it this time. Oh, I'm so glad. Also, no one has died. And it makes me wonder. Like, no one has died this whole mm. season so mm-hmm. far. And who might be on that list? I wonder about Luciana. Mm. I don't know. She hasn't done too much this season. I don't know. It could be any of them, really. It really could be. I just thought of her because I just thought, I don't know. Who knows? They killed Madison off. They could kill anybody off. That's true. So We need to see where Daniel is at. I, wonder where I, I keep thinking somebody might die before the season is over. Mm. Just don't know who it's going to be. Okay. And I mentioned before how I really like the moments with June. She's just high on my list right now, so I'm hoping she won't die. I just like her talk with Annie and and with Al. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I hope she stays. And then plus, I almost thought I was a little worried because the way she kissed um, John goodbye, and mm-hmm. she tells Dwight take care of him. And I thought, oh my Aww. God, is one of them gonna die? I'm gonna die if one of them dies. Aww. That that will be so. Okay, I will be devastated if one of them dies. Uh Uh-oh. I know, I know. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Okay, and so you brought up Wendell, and I thought, why is Wendell at the landing strip all by himself? Hello? He's in a wheelchair. I know. They're all radioing him, and he... Why is he by himself? I don't understand why he's way over there somewhere by himself. Hmm, Wendell. Why isn't he in these episodes? Why isn't Sarah with him? It's beyond me. That doesn't make sense. Mm-mm. So, with all of that, Brooke, mm-hmm. why do you love this show? Well, it's for one, it's over the top. <laughs> Things are happening, and I'm like, really? 
<laughs> but I still love The Walking Dead. I love the writers. I love the directors. I love the set design. I love the show because it's still scary. I, I still do. And yeah. I, I, ooh, the radiation is such a good touch. Yeah, it is. You know, and it's it like in the zombie apocalypse being that there is possibly multiple effects within an apocalypse. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, if you couldn't get any deader. I know. They got to add radiation. Right, exactly. <laughs> I know. Why do you love The Walking, or fear The Walking Dead? Well, it's basically the same thing because the walkers still scare me. Mm-hmm. There's, they are always that threat. And now, like you said, the radioactive walkers are on the loose. And I like seeing people like Grace. She is out to accomplish her mission, her job, of containing and killing these contaminated walkers. So she will do anything at the expense of her own life. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't be here without these type of people. That's true. That's why I love the show. Yeah, I wonder if she's she and uh, Morgan are going to fall in love. Mm, Hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. Mm. He's all, "Mm mm-hmm. She called me a thoughtful, wonderful guy. (laughs) She's all, take your clothes off. He's like, wait, buy me a drink. I know. (laughs) First. That's so true. (laughs) So, uh, Brooke, who does your award go to? What was your favorite quote, character, or moment? Well, I loved, like, the strategic of the airplanes and mechanics and engineering. But I, I just think that Morgan is in a good place and he's come so far. I really think that he's my favorite character. We have sound effects just in support of They got the plane. Yes. There's an airplane flying above, and that is Morgan (laughs) and the crew flying over Santa Cruz. Um, But anyway, Morgan is my favorite right now, or my award goes to him, because um, we were talking earlier. I couldn't figure out who is the leader Mm -hmm. of the group, but you were saying it's supposed to be Morgan. I just, I don't see that necessarily because I feel like everyone's working as a team, but I love um, Morgan and his evolution and him having a clean slate and starting off fresh and maintaining that um, sense of humanity. Mm -hmm. So I'm really proud of him. You know what I noticed um, about Morgan was that he took that, um, his weapon and he was practicing and doing everything that friend of his had taught Mm -hmm. him. I thought that was an interesting moment of showing him going through all the motions of doing all the repetitions of what he learned Mm -hmm. just to like bring it all back and and hone in on his skill. It's meditation. Yeah. It was sort of like a meditation. So Mm -hmm. I really, I really, I noticed that and I thought, oh, I like that he's doing that, that they're showing that. Right. So it's like a part of him Mm -hmm. having the staff, you know, it's definitely a part of his life. He's had it um, walking dead wherever we saw him yeah for a couple of seasons at least and then him not having it would be he's like empty so yeah so oh my award where does my award go to my favorite quote character a moment mine goes to john and dwight for sure even though i don't think john should have kept the letter from dwight And Dwight could get really angry with him for doing so. I think John's heart is in the right place. He doesn't want to rob Dwight from the hope and the enthusiasm he's feeling now. And I really think John is such a good guy. And he really is my favorite character. I can tell. Yeah. (laughs) So I really, I love him. He's so cool and good. I love him. So that's sweet. Yeah. So, Brooke, what are you currently watching? Well, other than Big Little Lies for The Walking Dead and Euphoria, uh, actually, the kids and I, we watched uh, an anime. It's a drama and romance, and it's called The Silent Voice. Okay. Sorry. A Silent Voice. You could watch it on Netflix. Okay. And um, my family... They're really big on anime in the household. Um, and so uh, it's rare that Gabriel, my eldest son, um, watches TV with us. But he put this on. And I had actually come home from last week's recording with you. Uh-huh. And they were watching it. And it's called A Silent Voice on Netflix. And I walk into the door and the kids are like, Mom, this movie is so good. It's so sad. Oh, my god! It's so good. You would feel so bad for this girl. 
And I'm like, what the heck is happening? What are they watching? So it's about um, grade school students. And this one particular character, she is hearing impaired. And she wears a hearing device in her ear. And she ends up being bullied by another student. Oh, and they're man. about in middle school age, mm-hmm. so seventh, eighth grade. Actually, I think they might even be in sixth grade. So it's like that tween age. Yeah, okay. Right? Um, well, she's bullied pretty badly by a group of people, but particularly by one person. And then they, they show us years later um, where they're in high school and how everybody's adapted and evolved and become their mature person. Okay. And um, that bully, we see him go through a transformation. The hearing impaired girl, she develops as well. And then we see their families um, and how they interact with each other, being that they know about the bullying that has happened in the school. And it's really um, a heartfelt movie. Mm -hmm. I, You know, like you've watched Toy Story and some other animated films. This one is, you know, a Japanese animation. Um, And so it's just a different... uh, theme genre but there's art that is amazing yeah I mean, the watercolor is just so beautiful the storyline is incredible and it just speaks to you. i mean my daughter she's five years old she cried for two days oh, after tears seen this? tears of course i'm sure yeah yeah she was so sad and so she calls it the sad movie so she still <laughs> wants to see it again i watched it so i wa- i came in like 45 minutes to the end of the movie and then i had to watch it from the beginning from the beginning the yeah. following day because like they kept talking about it and she's crying and I'm oh like, man oh. so yeah. i watched the beginning to see what was so impactful in uh-huh. my children's you know hearts yeah yeah and it really hit their heart <gasps> oh yeah so i watched it and yes it definitely did speak to me but you know i watched so many different types of I movies know. and so I many know. shows that you know, are heartfelt and, uh, you know, but this one was, it was really good. It was beautiful. I think anyone can enjoy this movie. Yeah. Anyone can. Yeah. So it had a really good message as well. And there were surprising moments in it as well, like things that I did not even expect. So I recommend it. It's A Silent Voice on Netflix. Cool. Yeah. What have you been watching? Well, Big Little Lies, of course. Woohoo! And so uh, everyone tune in to episode 55 to hear our review on that. Yeah. Um, besides that, uh, you know, I watch my regular reality shows, but the only one I want to bring up is uh, So You Think You Can Dance. Um, they have made their final selections and they're going to go on to... I think it's Hollywood week next week. But I just wanted to say that there was a tap dancer that... Um, came on and tap dancers uh, they don't ever pick too many of them Mm. Um, but sometimes there'll be at least one tap dancer maybe two in the final however many they have Mm. or that go on to Hollywood week I think this person they mentioned um, was there last year and he was a a guy who um, I think he's 18 now so might have been 17 I'm not sure but he came out as gay on national television which was really hard for him to do and he didn't I don't know how far he went but he didn't go too far I think he went to Hollywood but I don't think he got too far Hmm. so he came back this year because you you can come back the following year Mm -hmm. so he came back and he said it was really hard because he came out on national television his parents didn't know and so you know a lot his life has really changed and and um and so he wanted to come back he came back he tap danced Oh my gosh, it was so moving. The the panel of judges had tears coming down their face. The hip hop guy, the judge said, "I have never cried to a tap routine." <laughs> Never. Usually you cry in a contemporary or, you know, something that's evoking an emotion or a story. This guy was just doing tap. Not just doing tap, but you know what I mean. It was more, um, you know, usually tap is more uplifting and high energy and, you know, but it was really moving. Mm. And I, I just... 
I, I loved it. They all got up. They all applauded. I'm pretty sure it was the guy that said that, but I, they were practically all in tears. So it was really good. And uh, he, oh, the other thing that was shocking is that he free formed that whole thing. And then their mouths dropped even further. They're like, that wasn't choreographed. And he's all, no, I wanted to thank my parents for supporting me and uh, being there for me. So this was to them. Oh, my Aww. gosh. So I just want to say, I that's love, so cool. you think you can dance. It's an awesome show. <laughs> so you think you can dance. Yeah. So that's what I've been watching. Awesome. And that's our show. Thanks for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in, and we hope something we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity, or inspiration. Please subscribe to our podcast and tell a friend. We would love more members of our TV club. Rate and review the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Please, please, please do this. We need your feedback. We'll be taking a one-week break, so we'll be uploading two new episodes Tuesday, July 30th. Next show will be on Fear the Walking Dead, Season 5, Episodes 7 and 8, and Big Little Lies, Season 2, Episodes 6 and 7. This will be the finale for both the shows. Please watch those shows if you are listening to our podcast. We would love you your are. feedback. <laughs> you are. can find our website listed in our show notes. See you next time. Bye. Bye.